I remember looking up and like spitting blood out of my face um, and out of my mouth, it was, it, that wasn't nice. And then there was people looking over me. There was like eight people crowded over me. And then all I, I remember getting in the ambulance and getting taken to the hospital. And I was floating in and out. And I remember what the doctor um, said, like, oh, Callum, we need to keep you awake. Stay awake, stay awake, because if you go to sleep, then they don't know. Because I've had such a traumatic injury, they don't, they don't know if I'm going to sleep for a, for a long time or for a partial time. So they were trying to keep me awake and awake. And yeah, I, I was just floating in and out. And then I was fully awake at the hospital. I woke up and I just saw my dad there in his suit from work, he just left straight from work and I looked at him and he was like surprised that I woke up and uh, he just said to me, he was like, you okay son? And I just looked at him and I was, the first thing I said was like, am I going to die? Callum Coulter is a professional footballer that plays for Aldershot Town. Tragedy struck when Callum was just 12 years of age. He was run over and left in a critical state. He has fought his way back through major adversity and continues to defy all of the odds. I got into football uh, back when I was about seven years old. Um, like every little boy, just wanted to play football, just for, for the fun of it. Um, I think mum and dad got me into it and then really just done it on a Saturday and Sunday for what seems like the whole of my life ever since. I never really fancied going in goal, never really rated it. Um, everyone wants to score goals and stay up top and don't do the running back. And then all of a sudden, I think I think um, the goalie of one of the teams just didn't turn up one day or was injured or whatever. And I just was like, I'll go in goal, give it a go. And I was actually all right at it. And I was just, I wouldn't say natural, but was making saves and all of that. And um, yeah, I think I, think I played that game, one game and then another game, and then one of the dads on the sideline, he was like, said to my dad, he's like, you need to get your son some coaching because it, he's good. And I was, I had no idea. My dad was like, look, we've been recommended this coaching, do you want to go there? And we're doing like private goalkeeper coaching down in Aldershot, but not actually Aldershot. And um, I was there for a couple of months and then the coach there was like, look, I've got um, contacts in Aldershot Academy. Do you want to go down? And then just went from there, went there, ended up training with them, playing with them, and then all of a sudden signed like a little young deal or whatever it's called at the, at the time, and went from there. The dream at 11 years old was probably to be a superhero. <laughs> um, not to be a footballer. I wasn't really too bothered, to be fair. I liked football. Dad got me into football, but never really was anything like... I want to be a footballer or anything like that. It was just enjoying on a Saturday, then training every now and then in the week. But at that time, I was 11 years old, training twice or three times a week. I mean, that's a lot different to a lot of, a, a lot of 12, 11 year olds. I mean, they'll probably just be going back from primary school, going home, chilling out, playing Xbox or whatever. So it's, 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 a, bit, it's a bit different looking back on it, but yeah. All the shot actually folded. Um, the first team at the time, I think they got relegated to from League Two to National League at the time, and um, the whole academy system just just collapsed. Money reasons and all of that. I don't really know too much of the ins and outs. Um, so it all just went. So everyone from I think under 18 downwards just had to leave. Um, the couple of the coaches then formed into moved into Crawley, Crawley Town. Um, then I went there for a bit, and then like I reckon two months into that, folded again. I didn't even play a game from or all of that. It was just a bit of a weird situation. But yeah, that all got shut down, and then yeah, and then I was out of it for a while. Uh, it was like the end of term, around like an Easter break kind of time, and um, I finished school and I went to my friend's house because. I was good mates with him, and then my mum was also good mates, so it worked out well. And um, yeah, I just went around his house, we were playing inside on the Xbox and all of that kind of stuff. Then he was like, do you want to go outside? I was like, yeah, cool. Went outside, he was like, I'll grab my skateboard and my scooter. And I'm at the time, I've never been a skater or anything like that. I've just, my balance is horrendous. 
Um, so I never really got too involved in it. And he lives in a cul-de-sac, so it's like kind of like as the entrance, you come down on a hill. So we're going up the hill and then down on the skateboard and all that. And as we built confidence up, we'd go like further up the hill. And as you go in, there's like a rumble strip. So like just before, the, just after the rumble strip was like the highest point we could go. And I was going down from there. My mum came out. Was like, oh look, we're going now. So um, like, let's get ready. And uh, I was like, all right, because I just went. We were taking it in turns. I was like, oh Louis, can I have another go? Because like, I'm just about to go. And um, he was like, yeah, of course. So I was going up there, and um, got to the rumble strip. Put the skateboard down, setting up, making sure it's straight. Looked at Louis, looked down. Then I look, as I looked down again, all I remember is Louis just shouting car. And um, yeah, I don't remember too much. I don't remember the impact or anything, but a car just came around the corner from the main road too quickly, hit me from behind. And then, yeah, just on the floor, flashing images of, of stuff, but I don't remember too much of it at the time. I got transferred from Frimley Park Hospital to St George's Park, or St George's Hospital um, in London, which is like a fracture clinic specialist. Um, I fractured my skull in 12 different places. Um, I'm partially blind in my left eye and I'm 60% deaf in my right ear. Um, they're the withstanding injuries, obviously the fractures are now healed. Um, but yeah, those are the long term injuries that I've still got now. Here we are. Here we are. I ain't, I, this is the first time I've actually been back here. The first time I've been back here since since I was 13, really. It was right here. This is the rumble strip I was talking about. Literally right on this spot, setting up the skateboard. Going down there, and Louis, it was so funny. So Louis, you're thinking, how on earth are you gonna stop a skateboard whilst you're driving down, going down it on your belly? We'd go down here on our belly, and Louis would stand at the bottom with his legs like that, and he'd catch our shoulders. Mate, it was honestly the most one of the most dangerous things you'd be doing. If my mum, if my mum saw me doing that, she'd be like, "What on earth are you playing at?" But yeah, that's mate, just kids for you, though, isn't it? That is that is literally 13. thirteen year old kids after school playing, yeah. playing out in their little front drive, mate. And but, what what emotions have you got coming back to this side? I mean, uh, I'm a bit speechless, to be fair. I've, I've um. Like I just said, it's the first time. It's the first time I've been here, actually on foot and walked. I mean, I walked past here and and driven past here. Um, I remember when I was when I was proper young, straight like two years after the accident. I wasn't really, I wasn't really um, wanting to look. When we drive past here, I wouldn't look at, like look at this road. Um, but it's, I feel like I've come come a long way since it. Like I don't really, it doesn't really bother me too much. But um, yeah, I remember for a while. Louis used to live down there at the big house on the left. I remember because I got hit, it pushed me down. Um, I, don't, that, I don't think that is it. There was a mark on the road. There might be it, I don't want to say it like it is. Um, but yeah, there was a mark on the road and there was a blood stain for a while, um, which is not, not the nicest thing to think of. But yeah, I remember I was lying down about here because the contact was made up here. Obviously, it's not too far. Though. The car was just going too fast, um, and he's come around. It's just hit me, bang, and I've just it just pushed me down. And if you imagine, I've just gone straight down on my face. Not nice. Um, yeah, and I was just on here, and it was just a crowd of people around me. I was just looking up at the sky. There was blood all over my face. Yeah. Oh my god, it's had a probably everlasting impact on his sister because she saw it and when she was only five um, so it's taken a long time for her to get over that um, for his dad and I we both dealt with it differently so Phil focused on his rehabilitation whereas for me I just went into mum mode and just carried on just doing what I kept on doing which was taking him to the football and motivating him and feeding him and making sure he slept properly all the things that yeah mums should do 
I had a year out of pretty much a lot of stuff. I was, I think I was out of school for what, about six months. And then I was off football for a pretty much, I think it was like 340 to 50 days. So just under a year. Um, just because one, confidence, two, obviously the injuries, and three, just do I want to go back into it? Um, I think them answers got, um, I think them questions got answered pretty quickly after my first session because I just loved it again. But yeah, it was, it was tough. I mean, I was, it was like a lot of like, unconscious thinking of am I gonna get hurt again is it gonna hurt when I dive is the ball gonna hurt me or am I gonna get kicked am I gonna think of all these things that could happen but like they're very unrealistic and the probability of me actually getting injured by that is very minimal but because obviously what I've been through it just made my head and awareness just go through the roof I always held on to the fact that he was buzzing when he finished and absolutely loved it and so I just held on to that and that's why we continue to do it. And I dealt with the argument, sort of sulking in the car. And then I think he got to the point where he knew he had the opportunity and people were believing in him. And then you kind of just work together. And then I've already committed then. Following his year long absence from football, Callum went along to a talent identification event to try and find a new club. He didn't get scouted that day, but met Colin Barnes a goalkeeper coach that began to give him private sessions and was a massive influence on his life. Yeah, Colin, Colin Barnes is, uh, I'd say, my, my little personal mentor. Um, the godfather of football, I like, I like to call him, or godfather of goalkeeping. He, um, he was instrumental. I mean, I, I owe him a lot. He's, um, he's, a, he's a great person. He was like a father figure. He was a mentor and he absolutely believed in him. And he is somebody that we still speak to today. And yeah, he's absolutely lovely and just gives that motivation. He always said that he would get things running and things rolling with me. And when I was 14, 14 and a half, fast forward a year and a half to 16, he got me in at Crystal Palace. So I am I am a lot. At England school, boys, you've had the chance to represent your country. How's that one? Yeah, I mean, England school boys came along. My dad actually sorted that out, actually. Um, not like gave a gave him a call and said get my son in but he brought it up to me and um, I was I didn't have a clue what it was at the time because I was still balancing I was um, doing um, school work like privately um, but well, not privately but separately to the, the education that Crystal Palace gave me just because I wanted I, I came out GC, with my GCSEs quite good and um, I wanted to do something more than a BTEC sport. So I took A-level maths and A-level business at Farnborough Sixth Form and I had to do that two, three days a week or two and a half days a week whilst balancing football as well. And my dad was like, if you're still a part of a school slash college, you can do this England school stuff. And um, yeah, I got, I got chosen out of it and um, played four games for England schools. So. Yeah, so it was a good time in my life. It's it quite a proud thing I, I look back on, and uh, yeah, I recommend anyone that ever does get the chance to do it to do it. Just six months into Callum's contract with Crystal Palace, he left through mutual consent. He was third in the pecking order and wasn't playing matches where he felt he could develop as a player. And I had a chat with uh, the under 18s manager at the time, Paddy McCarthy, and I just said, look, I don't. I don't feel like you want me to be here. I don't feel like I want to be here. Can we just split ways? And that was the easiest conversation I ever had. He was like, yeah, fair enough. I was like, right, cool, sweet, nice to be here. See you later. Went home and it was all gone. I was just a bit like, six months ago, I've just signed a deal at a Premier League club and I was like buzzing and all like that. And then all of a sudden I've got nowhere to go and just got college. I was back to being like a, a, a normal student and all of that kind of stuff and I was just like this is not what I want to be. I think I was doing it for like a week without football and I hated it. And then all of a sudden they, uh, Colin said Colchester wanted you to come in. Never heard of Colchester and I never knew where it was. My, found out I was in Essex, found out my family lived in Essex so I was like oh perfect I'll stay with my family. Stayed with my family for a bit, um, my nan that lives up there. About a week or so later, I signed a deal um, at Colchester, and then the season finished. I finished the season with them, and then yeah, and it was like off season, then pre season. Then I was there for 
my two year deal that I signed and then um, my year pro that I signed after. So I was there for three years in total, which was, was, was good. I don't think he would have been able to do it on his own, if I'll be honest with you. I think there's too many difficulties as a child anyway, especially with peer pressure. Um, I think they need their parents or some kind of family support to back them, definitely. But yeah, it was good. I enjoyed my time at Colchester, but it came to an end, um, which I feel like it, overall I'm happy with. I feel like if I stayed there a bit longer, I felt like I would have, I would have lost more feelings for the game. Um, but who knows? Anyway, it was about May time, 2021, I got released. Just didn't get offered a new deal. And quitting was definitely, definitely an option, which I never thought it would be. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely came through my head once or twice. Um, and it was tough to think about it. I never really spoke to anyone about it. I spoke, I just kept it to myself. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's always been in the back of my mind, especially more recently after what I've been through compared to everything going so, so sweetly. The following summer was hard for Callum. He spent time training and trialling with clubs up and down the country before finally landing a contract with his hometown team and the club he started his career at, Aldershot Town. And you're now currently at Aldershot, but you're also coaching on the side. How important is it to you to try and teach the, the next generation and get involved with youngsters? Yeah, I started coaching goalkeeping, um, I think it was about, I want to say August time last year. And I've just enjoyed it. My mate, Miles Bowman, I've known for ages. He was actually all shot with me when I was 11 years old. He was, he was the year above, that's how we knew each other. We kept in contact over socials. And I saw he started up a coaching business whilst I was at Colchester. And I mentioned it, it was like, oh, I would like to get involved. And he was like, oh, perfect, because I was looking for another coach. I was going to ask you. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's such a good feeling knowing that I've done a session and they've come out of it and they're they're buzzing and they, they loved it and they tell me stuff that they've learned and all of that. Next week they come and say like, oh, I've been working on this. It's, it's such a good feeling knowing that I'm, I'm affecting what they're doing. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good feeling. And do any of the kids, have any of them had similar experiences to what you've had? Um, not so far and I don't wish any of them on them, but I know it probably will become um, a situation in their life. But what me and Miles are, have made sure is that if anything does happen like that, me and Miles have been in the same boat. We've both been released from clubs when we've had professional contracts, so they so they know where to go if needed. And the final question I've got for you, how proud are you of Callum? Oh, immensely proud. Immensely proud, yeah. It's a really tough industry, and I think if we did it again, I'd probably think hard before I did it, because it's exhausting, and puts a lot of strain on the whole family but he's achieved so much and I just hope he gets his lucky break sometime because he deserves it. If you could go back and say something to your 13 year old self, what would that be? If I could go back and tell my 13 year old self, it would be don't take what other people say too seriously. Don't let anyone's opinions define what you can do. You're only as good as what you believe you are. That's what I'd have to say.